All right, hello and welcome to pmclounge.com. My name is Shoaib and the voice behind all the videos that you see on the pmclounge.com website as well as this YouTube channel which is youtube.com slash pmclounge. Subscribe to us if you haven't done so already and hit that bell icon. By the way, we are all about project management. We are all about uh, the PMB certification. And the point of this video is to cover a question that came in through Quora and I really like this question because it's not about the theory, it's not about what you read on a day-to-day -day basis. It's not about what you read in Rita Mulkai or Head First or in the PMD OK Guide. This is a question around real life project management. So the question is, what are some of the problems that a real life project manager faces on his day-to-day -day life? And I really like this question, I really wanted to cover it. Um, and let me know in the comments, this is just my personal experience. Let me know in the comments if your experience is different, if your experience is similar and share uh, whatever you would want to uh, on this topic. So what are some of the problems of a real life project manager? I've managed to get four and I've created a note on it so that this video doesn't go on and on and on and I keep talking about my day to day project management problems, right? So. Um, if you read anywhere, if you read all the reports that we have covered as part of project management, if you read, uh, uh, you know, project management from the book, you know that the problem that most of the project manager face or complaint about is communication. Everybody says communication is a real problem and I tend to agree with it. Communication is definitely a problem, but there are certain problems that you will face only when you really work on projects when you have real life project management situations these are some of the problems that you are going to face number one is going to be scope creep or change requests now you already know what scope creep is i'll share a link uh, to the video where we discussed about scope creep but to uh, for the benefit of this video uh, scope creep is where your project goes through you know changes uncontrolled changes and while in the book you read about how you can tackle that situation and how every small little change need to go through the change management procedure your change management plan should be followed in all possible situations but here's a real life situation that i'd like to share with you you're working on a project you have a project sponsor project sponsor walks to your desk or to your cabin and tells you, hey, uh, Shoaib, how are you today? I hope you're doing great. Uh, there's this small feature that I want to be included as part of this project. Um, so can you do that? Can you accommodate it? What will your reply be? Will you be so rude to tell your project sponsor that, hey, uh, it's, it's great that you have suggested this feature. Can you file it in the change management system and let's go through the change management plan? What if he comes in and tells you, hey, I want a favor from you. I'm not going to file a change request for this small change. Can you accommodate it? Now, if you go by the book, if you go by the PMP certification, if you go by all the project management text that is available out there, your answer is definitely going to be, let's go through the change management procedure and accommodate it. But on real life project management situations, you might not be able to say that 100% of the time. Just let that sink in. You will not be able to say that 100% of the time. There will be situations on real life projects where somebody who is extremely important, not just to your project, but to the organization as a whole, can walk into your cabin and ask you to accommodate a change without mentioning a thing about your change management plan. So that I think is one of the major problems that real life project managers face. All right, let's talk about second problem that real life project managers face and that is dependency management. Dependency starts with D, disaster starts with D and dependencies can lead to disaster major, major disasters if they are not managed properly. Let's take an example of a construction project, right? You are at the initiating stage of construction, not the project. You are just initializing the construction. So what's the first thing that you do? You're digging up the ground, right? You're digging up the ground. But let's say 
the dependency that you have on that are the heavy machinery that you would need all those heavy equipment heavy machinery that you need to start digging up the ground to initialize your construction right to begin with your construction once that is done you need the delivery of concrete and cement and steel and whatever that you need for construction right now let's say your concrete and steel is supposed to arrive two weeks after your ground is dug up right so it will take two weeks to dig up the ground and within that two weeks towards the end of those two weeks is where this raw material is going to come in let's say these equipments that are used to dig up the ground they don't show up the heavy machinery the vehicles the heavy vehicles that are involved to dig up the ground cranes and whatnot they just don't show up for one week they show up a week later so what is going to happen on week two towards the end of week two you have your concrete and everything arrived on the site but your digging up work is not yet done and if D stands for disaster then what would happen is just beyond two weeks on the 15th day you will see rain occurring and you'll have no place to safeguard the concrete the steel and whatnot right so you know things can go wrong this was of course a very uh, you know a high level example very easy to understand example of course if you're procuring this uh, this much amount of concrete and steel and whatnot you will definitely have place to safeguard them but just to give you an example of how dependencies work right just to give you an example of how activities can be dependent on each other and it is important to manage dependencies it is important that the heavy machinery to be used to dig up the ground show up on the first day the planned first day and not a week later all right so third problem that real life project managers face is procurement procurement is a big big issue um, especially uh, we, we saw in the first in the example that we just took about uh, dependency right the thing with procurement is there is so little that you can control right if you've ordered 100 servers from China and they are supposed to be delivered in let's say here in Kolkata if they are to be delivered from Shanghai to Kolkata you've ordered 100 servers and you received just 98 of them two of them were misplaced big big issue you are in deep trouble your project is on a toss so like I said uh, the biggest problem with procurement is there is very little that you can do here and the last and final uh, problem uh, the real life project managers face uh, problem number four is translating high level design and this is specific for uh, software projects translating the high level design into coding that is again a pain pain at all the wrong and the right places so you have a certain design which is approved right so when you create a design document right based out of your requirements of course based off your system requirements you'll create a high level design document this design document is typically approved by everyone involved but when it comes to coding you need coding knowledge you need technical knowledge to be able to read and approve code and this is typically something that a customer won't do a customer may approve your high level design but your low level design your coding is something that the customer might not approve and that is why translating high level design to coding is a problem that I have faced many times in my in my project management experience uh, and again as a project manager there might not be much that you could do about it because this is technical stuff this is super uh, this is super super technical right you cannot go and join the coding team and do coding yourself you just cannot do that so those were my four problems that as a project manager I have faced in real life what are some of your experience do share that and uh, that's pretty much it that I had in this video subscribe to the channel uh, a lot of people ask what books to read to clear the PMP exam it's available at pmclounge.com slash PMP preparation resources I'll share the link and in the description the link will be there 
And don't forget to check out the website bmclounge.com, your number one free resource for BMB and other project management certifications. Uh, that's about it. I'm at the beautiful IIM Kolkata campus, signing off from here. See you guys later. Bye-bye.